Hello kings, queens, nerds, and geeks. Powder Milk here, and welcome back to another video. Today, I'll be doing a, uh, a fan fiction reading on a... Um, actually, not a fan fiction reading, it's more of a fan fiction reaction video to what Lost Narrators readings. Um, for those of you who don't know Lost Narrators, which is weird in case you don't, um, Lost Narrator is a fan... is a my, known brony... Um, My Little Pony uh, fan fiction reader, and um, I'm sorry, uh, I'm not. I don't know much about Lost because I just, I only follow her stories. I don't know her as a person as much. Um, and um, this is actually one of her first. It's called Tempta Temptation, and oh yeah, I think it was her first romance. One where Verity and Applejack. I figured I'd start something nice, you know, off because I figured I need something nice instead of this dark stuff I always do on my YouTube channel. And I figured I'd start doing some light stuff. So um, those of you who follow my channel and do these things, um, just remember I do not own this video, this uh, calling thing. It is owned by the Lost Narrator, and it doesn't belong to me. Also, guys, you're probably wondering why it took so long for me to make a video. It's because I've been away in a cabin. And that's I forgot to mention that last video. And I was away in a cabin for the weekend. So I need to tell you that now. And me, we were just having some fun. No, it didn't end out too... It didn't end well in the end, which I will not explain why. But, um, yeah. So, anyway, let's continue on to this. I really want to see this. It's about almost 20 minutes long. So, let's... I know what's how the story goes. Oh wait, before I start, I need to pause real quick. Okay, here we go, back into it. Rarity couldn't sleep. It wasn't the unfamiliar bed. While she had only slept in Twilight's bed a few times, it was surprisingly comfortable. The mattress was soft and firm enough not to lose herself in it and it accorded to just the right amount of support to her supine body. Nor was she cold. The Ponyville Library was a cozy place, and the blankets resting over her body trapped just the right amount of warmth to leave her comfortable without overheating. It wasn't even the weight or heat of the pony beside her. While it was true that she often did share a bed with another, this was hardly the first time she had done so at one of Twilight's sleepovers. No, the trouble was their sleeping arrangement. For whatever reason, contrary to their usual back-to-back -back positioning, Applejack had fallen asleep facing her friend. Her warm, slow breaths had been tickling Rarity's mane ever since the pair had fallen asleep, and turning to face her was no better. True, it stopped the distracting flow of warm air through her mane, but watching Applejack sleep made her escaping her thoughts all but impossible. Applejack's normally tied back mane hung loose around her head, a blonde cascade which lay draped over a pillow, a few strands resting over her face. She had agreed to participate in the makeovers again tonight, and, after Rarity had commented on its beauty when her mane was hanging loose, and how seldom they had got to see it that way, hadn't tied it back into its usual ponytail. Rarity had seen the small smile her friend had worn when Applejack thought she wasn't looking. That smile... That was what was keeping her up. That smile and the warmth that had entered her green eyes. Her friend often smiled. Applejack, like most of her friends, had frequent cause to do so. And they were genuine things, not a mask. Huh. But it wasn't often that she had seen a smile like that. And never on Applejack's face. The pony had been pleased at the compliment. Even if it had made her uncomfortable. But there was something else there as well. Or was there? Rarity sighed, wiggling slightly to make herself more comfortable. She wasn't sure, really. True, it was a unique smile, but it could mean any number of things. Perhaps she was merely happy that her ever-fashionable, beautiful friend had complimented her on her appearance, and she was not expecting it. That could be it. But what if it wasn't? What if she actually liked her? This was trouble. To be honest, that was kind of expected, to be honest. Um, I don't know who wrote the story. I think they should have. I, I think I'll mention at the end of the video who wrote the story. Um, 
that I figured this was kind of, I, I think it's kind of cheesy in a way, to be honest. Uh, I think it's personally cheesy. It's, it's something cliche, you know, um, something that, it's always something in the story, like this spark that happens in you. Kind of like the magic of friendship. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, but that's kind of the same thing that just happened here. Were she alone, she would have been able to approach it in her usual manner. But it would be most uncouth to ask the questions she would have asked herself in front of her potential paramour. So she had kept it within, and had gone to bed with her thoughts. And Applejack's decision to sleep so that she could see her handsome face was simply unfair. Handsome face. Or was it? Huh. Perhaps Applejack was unsure of Rarity's intentions herself, and had deliberately placed herself in a position of trust. Perhaps Applejack was hoping that Rarity would show some sign, make some move while they laid together in bed to avoid mutual embarrassment. Nothing untoward, of course. Applejack may lack the social grace of the nobility, but Rarity had no doubt her friend would find the idea of anything improper as a horn as she did, especially with Twilight sleeping in the room with them. But facing her as she was, it was a friendly gesture, a welcoming gesture. It did not mean anything, but if Rarity chose, she could lean over and touch her snout to that of her friend, to give her a nuzzle or a kiss. Rarity shook herself. Again, cliche. How could she think such a thing? The slow walk of her eyes over her friend's face gave her the answer. How could she not? Applejack was beautiful, and unlike many, she did not need any pony else to make her so. Her work on the farm gave her the glow of health, and allowed the bones and musculature of her face to speak for itself. While some might see the freckles on her cheeks as a flaw, such ponies could not tell silk from twall. Her jaw was well defined, but not in the lantern jawed sort of way that some ponies had. No, Applejack's was perfect, and her lips. She caught herself with her snout bare inches away from that of her friends. It was one thing to think, even- So I'm guessing right now, this is actually right now, at this point, is it, it's obvious, but it's at Rarity's point of view, and- this is Rarity falling in love with Applejack. So that's that's what we got so far. And um, do I have any figurines for them? No, I don't. Those are actually two of my least favorite ponies. No offense to anybody of you guys to, who actually love these characters. They're actually my least favorite ponies because they get less screen time and less character in them. Because they're two very, very cliche characters, in my opinion. Applejack is the cliche farm girl and... Rarity is the, is the, um, what's the word? That's the cliche fashionista. Um, and that's the thing, and that's why I don't like these characters, because they're too cliche. Like, like Fluttershy, as in for shy, po for a shy pony, yeah, she's overly shy, but she can learn to overcome things, which is natural. Rarity and Applejack don't change much, except they learn to accept each other's, you know, way of life. But that, other than that, they don't really change much. That's that's why I don't like them as much. But and um, and the same thing goes for um, Rainbow Dash. She learns to, you know, you know, of course, uh, she likes to learn things. But she, uh, out of all the ponies. She is the one with the very unique superpower. Like, she has her own. Actually, if you think about it, all of these ponies have a special superpower in some form of way. For example, for example, Applejack, she's got super strength. She, um, she, if you notice, she's more stronger than most female ponies. Um, and I think that's also apparent, also like a genetic thing, because her brother is extremely strong as well. Look at Big Mac, he's huge. Um, Rarity, she has what I would call a silver tongue. I like how I just rambled on after this, but um, she has a silver tongue, and that's pretty interesting. Um, with the right talent, you'll know how to use a silver tongue. And, um, of course, there's Fluttershy. She has the stare, which we all know, which is, like, a really unique ability. Um, then we have Rainbow Dash, who has super speed, because she can go faster, she can go faster than the speed of sound, which is pretty fucking fast. 
um, which is faster than most fighter jets that we have. Um, um, let's see. Um, and Twilight, of course, she's got, you know, immense magical ability, which is natural in unicorns. But she's got, she's more av on average, and plus she's a princess, which technically she's a goddess. So, um, who am I missing? That's all of them, I think. Wait, I am missing one. Pinkie Pie! Pinkie Pie! My favorite! How can I forget? Pinkie Pie, of course, is able to break the laws of physics. Seriously, she can, like, change her body shape and disassemble and reassemble at will. Which is kind of weird. Come on, that was really apparent in the episode where we found out that, um... What's his name? Uh, Shining Armor and Cadence had a... is going to have a baby, which is now Flurry Heart, so... Anyway, we gotta get back to the story because I'm rambling on way too much. I've probably been rambling on for seven minutes now, so actually probably less than that, but... I didn't dream of what the touch of those lips would feel like, but it was quite another to simply steal a kiss, to take one without asking, but the temptation was strong. It would answer so many questions of her own. What would it be like to kiss her friend? Would it create a spark between them? Did she want it to? What was Applejack to her? The answers escaped her, and only a kiss would find them. But Applejack was asleep, and in any case, had shown no indication that she wanted to kiss her. True, she had slept facing her, but perhaps she simply had been making herself comfortable or wished to speak to her better before she slept. Perhaps it meant nothing, and was reading far too much into things. Or perhaps it meant everything, and Applejack had fallen asleep disappointed that Rarity had not shown any indication of noticing. The unicorn reached out with her hoof, gently placing it on Applejack's shoulder. As she shifted her body closer to the Earth Pony, she could feel the muscles beneath her coat, earned by years of working on the farm, even years when she should have had more time to relax, to be a filly. Fate had conspired against that, but the farmer never complained. She had simply done what needed to be done, and despite her hardship, every year since Applejack had taken over the farm, things had gotten better. Most of Canterlot would have doubted it, but Applejack was a savvy business pony. Her hard work, dedication, and excellent produce earned her ever-increasing business from the ponies of Ponyville, and even those beyond. Zap Apple Jam was all the rage this year in Canelot, it seemed, and a few remaining jars of last year's harvest had been fetching truly astonishing sums. But it was not luck that drove Applejack's success. Every year, the farm was more productive. Every cider season, she made more cider than the last one, but every season it wasn't enough. Each year found more ponies lined up earlier than the year before, eager for a taste of the golden ambrosia. Not only had Applejack started harvesting from other fields of trees, wisely planted five years before in anticipation of the need, but she was doing so without adding another farmhand, and all the costs associated with it. No. She, her brother, and her little sister harvested all the apples by themselves, and every year they brought back more apples, and allowed fewer to spoil to pest and disease, and Applejack managed to sell each and every one of them. Rarity wished she could say the same. Her dresses were gorgeous, and her designs improved every year, but even she had had her failures. And the time... Okay, I have to be honest, this one's confusing me. Is she, like, envious of her entrepreneurship? Is that, is that what I'm hearing here, or is she envious of the entrepreneurship? Because, <clears throat> you know, I've seen Rarity, I haven't seen her sell much dresses, but I've seen Applejack sell tons of apples to make up for those dresses. So, here we go, let's try to- time she spent gathering materials herself was time she could have spent designing and making more dresses. One pony could only do so much without driving herself into the ground. Yet Applejack managed to do more every year with less labor while Rarity had to stretch her hours to meet new orders. True, she had been called away on various duties on behest of the princess, but so had Applejack, and there were still more apples this year than ever before. Sorry, this might be She would have to ask her how she did that. 
Her hoof slowly slid from Applejack's shoulder, its movement unbidden by its master, but welcome, feeling the smoothness of her friend's neck, then the shape of her jaw, before finally resting on the farmer's freckled cheek. Rarity could feel her face burning. She had gone too far. And yet, Applejack remained dormant. It seemed she was a sound sleeper, and Rarity let out a slow breath she hadn't realized she was holding. This was foolish. If Applejack should wake, she would be curious why Rarity had been touching her. Perhaps she should wake her, so that, at least, they could share a kiss while conscious. But no, wrong as it was to kiss her asleep, it would still be more wrong to simply wake her to demand a kiss. It could wait until morning, but could she? Rarity closed her eyes. Stealing a kiss was wrong, but really, what harm would there be? Applejack was asleep after all, and it seemed the touch of her hoof would not wake her. Why would a kiss be any different? If the kiss went well, there was nothing preventing her from following up on it in the morning. If it went poorly, well, then she would have her answer, and Applejack would never have to be the wiser about her confusion. It almost seemed better this way. Either way, she would not have to have the uncomfortable confrontation, and Rarity would get her answer. Rarity opened her eyes and slid her body in closer, her other forehoof slowly sliding across the surface of the pillow to slide underneath her friend's neck, then upwards to gently lift her face ever so slightly. The warm air from Applejack's mouth tickled her lips, even as the warmth of her body seeped into Rarity's hooves. It was a wonderful sensation. The farmer's body was solid and yet giving in its own way. When did Rarity get so close? Looking into Applejack's closed eyes, she hesitated. Would this be the farmer's first kiss? She momentarily panicked. Stealing a kiss was one thing, but stealing her friend's first kiss was something else entirely. It was a sacred thing, a romantic thing. Could Rarity take it, just to satisfy her own curiosity? Should she? Her thoughts were interrupted when Applejack moved against her. Rarity's eyes widened as she felt her friend snuggle up into her chest, her own hooves slipping around Rarity's sides. She held her breath. Was she awake? A few moments later, the resumption of Applejack's slow, steady breathing announced her answer. The warmth of Applejack's body surrounded her. There was no way that Rarity could escape now that she was trapped in the tangle of her friend's legs. Barrel to barrel, she could feel every breath Applejack took. Even if she did not kiss her now, she would still owe Applejack an explanation in the morning. This realization freed her. She knew now that no matter what she did, she would have to tell Applejack, and even if she did not kiss her now, how could she explain that she wanted to? No. She must follow through, for the sake of her friend and herself. Rarity licked her lips as she waited to make sure that Applejack did not stir again, but her friend seemed content in her new position, a slight curve to her lips announcing her comfort. Rarity moved forward, her cheek grazing the pillow before she brought her snout to her friends, noses touching as she smiled at the sleeping mare, making no effort to hide the flush of her cheeks. No, there was no hiding from this, no reason or desire to mask her emotions. She breathed in. I like how this is the, the more PG version of sliding panties to the side. <laughs> I'm all fairness, that's what it is. And I hate being a perv about this, but I have to say, <laughs> this is legit, the pony slash PG version of sliding panties to the side. Um, and, and in some cases, it's intentional. <laughs> like, you know, you, no, think about it. Um, think about it. Um, you ever had, I don't know if any of you had this, some of this, sometimes this case is actually true. Sometimes the case is true where the girl says, don't try anything, but she actually secretly wants something. This is kind of like Applejack saying, 
is pretending to be asleep, but saying, hey, I want to kiss. She's doing it intentionally to Rarity to invite her in. That's, that's how I see this right now. I know I'm a perv, but I can't help that. I can't help that. And I'm not ma and I just realized that as I say this, I'm looking into the camera now at myself, and I just realized that makes me sound more perverted because I'm, if you notice, if you haven't noticed guys yet, I'm trying to grow a mustache, but, um, anyway, let's get back into this before I, my, before I put my foot in my mouth again. Her hesitation fading as the wonderful scent of the farmer filled her, sweet and earthly, and somehow deliciously feminine. A certain thrill flowing through Rarity's body as she realized she already had the answer. An answer which only firmed her resolve as she tilted her head and pursed her lips. The kiss was different from the few she had shared. Somehow, the farmer's unconscious lips were better more suited for kissing than the clumsy ones she had tasted before. They were like a mattress, soft but firm, giving, but allowing themselves to be molded in such a way that they would fit rarities perfectly. She let her hoof slowly slide down from her cheek to Applejack's shoulder, and she felt Applejack's own legs tightening around her in response. Rarity cared little, awake or asleep, she knew how she felt, and she would hide it no longer. Even when Rarity pulled her head back, the warmth lingered, both on her lips and deep in the core of her body, a terrific warmth which had nothing to do with the petty things of body heat. It was her soul itself that had been warmed, basking in the glow of Applejack's own, and Rarity knew her cheeks were burning, but did not care as she slowly caressed the farmer, watching her sleep. Finally, she allowed her hooves to wrap themselves around Applejack properly. Freed of the burden, Rarity allowed sleep to take her, carrying her away, her eyes closing to the beautiful sight of the face of her love. But even as sleep took her, it could not erase the silly grin that was on her face. Is there more? Applejack woke to the sensation of heavy warmth draped all around her. A warmth that could not be explained by the golden light of the morning sun. Opening her eyes, it took a moment for her to register what the field of white in front of her was. Applejack started, but the unicorn remained asleep. The smile on her face and the slight flush to her cheeks announcing some sort of pleasant dream. The vague memory of a dream of her own made Applejack blush. Well, she wasn't certain, she was pretty sure it featured Rarity. Shifting her legs, she realized as her hooves rubbed against silky fur that she must have snuggled up with Rarity during the night. She watched Rarity's face cautiously, but she showed no signs of discomfort, the unicorn only tightening her grip upon Applejack. Had Rarity snuggled up with her intentionally? Applejack's mind raced. She remembered Rarity's compliment from the previous evening, and had half hoped that her friend would be bringing it up before the pair fell asleep. But if she had noticed Applejack's elation, she had hidden it well. But if Rarity didn't snuggle up with her on purpose, how the hay had they gotten tangled up in each other? That didn't make <coughs> a lick of sense. One or the other, maybe. But the both of them? Her train of thought was derailed as she took a deep breath filling her lungs with a wonderful smell. She felt the heat rising in her face as she realized that it was Rarity, her true scent, not the perfume she frequently wore. Applejack had sometimes dreamed of what Rarity truly smelled like without trying to cover herself up, but her imagination had let her down. This was better than she had imagined. Licking her lips, Applejack realized she could practically taste her. Taste. That brought to mind how she could taste her, and with her snout mere inches away from Rarity's, there was only one part of her she was considering. But how could she? Rarity was asleep, 
and much as she seemed to be comfortable with her embrace, her no friend cliche. probably wasn't even aware of her, lost in some pleasant dream. Was she dreaming of her? Applejack sighed. Dreaming of her or not, it was wrong to kiss Rarity while she was sleeping. It was wrong, wasn't it? But those pale lips were so very tempting. Ah! You gotta be kidding me! Ah! It's just so cliche, but it was so good. And I, I, I love Lost voice. Lost, I, if you're watching this, I love your voice. I always, I always like hearing your voice. Especially when you did, um, it was, um, I do know the story by heart. It was, uh, Something Sweet to Bite. It was my favorite. I love it. I love it. But I, I gotta stop doing the voices sometimes. Also, um, anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video of me reacting to uh, The Lost Narrator's reading Temptation by, which I'm about to find out who is by. Um, here's the stuff that she said. Um, here we are. It's, um, yeah, yep, I decided to do a Ramad story. I'm pretty sure, of course, this was in December 9th, 2013. Uh, my first ever I've done, Silent Pony 2 doesn't count. Um, and I, it won't. And what better way to kick it off in the way my favorite pairing. Hopefully you enjoy this. More stories to come in up, on update soon. P.S. I, I had a cold. Time for recording. Time for recording the story. So I sound different. I'm sorry. LOL. If you t like this reading, please subscribe. You won't miss, you won't miss another. Uh, Temptation. Written by Titanium Dragon. Hmm. So... So narrator by the last narrator, there's an MP3 link and stuff, uh, summary. Rarity can't sleep, Applejack and the Odyssey fell asleep. That's pretty much the same stuff as both from before. But anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Also, guys, I'll let you, uh, to comment, should I grow a mustache? And also in the comments below, tell me, do I look like a pedo? Uh, here, let me, uh, put the camera up closer. Do I look like a pedo? That's all I have to ask. But anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'll catch you guys later. Stay nerdy, my friends. Bye-bye!